So there are 370 universities and colleges in the UK uh, spread across the country. And most of you probably know quite a lot about London, but it's well worth investigating the other cities because there are some really fantastic places. So you know, you might want to study in a big modern city, maybe an old city with lots of heritage, or maybe you want to study at a campus that's out in the countryside, maybe by the mountains or by the sea. There's, there's all sorts of choices on offer. So, so what does studying in the UK offer to you then? So just really briefly, I mean, the UK has got a very multicultural society anyway. There's people from all over the world there. And UK campuses are particularly multicultural. So um, there's around 2 million local students at universities in the UK, and they're joined by around 480,000 international students. So more or less 17% of the people you'll meet on campus are from different countries. And that, to me, that is the best thing about studying in the UK, actually, because you'll make friends with people from all over the world, and it's just the best fun ever. It feels like you're at some kind of United Nations conference or something. Um, another reason to study in the UK is that it's, it's well respected for the quality of its education. So you'll be getting qualifications that employers and academics really value. Here's a load of statistics if you want to have a read. You can read more on the educationuk.org website. But basically, you know, it's got a good quality of education, um, high student satisfaction rating. And it's also known as a, a, a world leader in research and innovation. And finally, another reason to choose studying in the UK is that it can really um, help you in your career. Um, so employers tend to really value um, graduates from the UK because of the international experience that they get and also because of the quality of their qualifications. Um, so, for example, in a recent survey, there was a survey of 27,000 employers around the world, and they asked them which universities they, um, they find the graduates to be the most employable, and five of the top ten universities were UK universities. Um, and lots of the courses in the UK are designed in partnership with businesses as well. Um, and in fact, the UK is in the global top five for university industry collaboration. Uh, and also, lots of UK courses allow you to do a work placement alongside your studies as well. So it's a great place to get lots of experience. And in fact, um, research shows that um, international students who study in the UK are more likely to earn more money when they graduate than if they'd stayed and studied at home. So moving on to look at some of the practicalities then. Um, so probably one of the first things that you'll want to do is work out which course to, to choose and which university or college to study at. Um, so there are around um, 100,000 higher education courses in the UK, so it can kind of make you feel a bit confused and like, where do you start? And like I said, there's 370 universities and colleges. So the best places to start, I would say, uh, there's a website called educationuk.org, which is run by the British Council, um, and there's another one called ucas.com, and they, are both, they both have search engines where you can look through all the courses on offer in the UK. So for example, this screenshot here is from ucas.com, and as you can see, it allows you to search, um, you know, you can be really detailed in your search and look for um, what kind of region you want to study in, what kind of course, what subject, etc. So you can narrow down the courses that you're interested in. So have a look at those two websites. Um, there's another good one called Unistats. Um, so this gives you, this is the UK's official website um, for comparing the quality of courses. It's really, really, really good. Um, it draws on survey data from students and lots of other sources, and you can work out the student satisfaction ratings for each course, were they happy with the teachers, how many students went on to get a job after they graduated, a whole load of stuff. It's a really, really fantastic website. So you can work out from that whether the course looks decent or not. Um, and of course, another thing to do when you're doing your research is to just contact the universities and colleges. You know, feel free to ask them all of your questions. Don't worry about asking anything stupid. They'll want to help you. 
So what qualifications do you need before you can study in the UK? Uh, well, actually, there's no set standard. Um, each course has its own standards. Um, you can find the information about what qualifications you need on UCAS.com or on the university and college websites. Um, but usually, if you're going to do an undergraduate bachelor's degree, then you'll need to have some further education qualifications first. So, like, if you're from the UK, I would have A-levels, or here the equivalent would be um, your senior certificate with matriculation. I think that's what, what you call it. Um, if you're going to do a postgraduate course, like a master's or something, or higher than that, then usually you would need an undergraduate qualification first. But actually, sometimes um, some courses allow you to enter if you've got good work experience. Um, and if you don't have the qualifications yet, then there's lots of courses you can do in the UK to help you get onto the right course. So you could do a foundation course before you start your bachelor's or whatever you need. So how to apply. Um, so if you're applying for an undergraduate course, like a bachelor's, um, then you have to apply through UCAS.com. This is what every single student in the UK um, uses to apply for courses. It's the universities and colleges admission service. So through UCAS, you can choose um, five courses that you want to apply for, up to, up to five, and that can be at one university or five, however, however many you want. Um, and if you're applying for a postgraduate course, you usually apply directly to the university or college itself. Sometimes they'll ask you to apply through a service called UK Pass, but they'll let you know about that. So just contact them and assume that you apply through them. Um, the academic year in the UK actually starts in September or October. Um, so, and it's well worth applying early because actually some courses ask you to apply nearly a year in advance. Um, don't worry if you can't apply a year in advance because sometimes they can be much more flexible with international students. But if you can, it's best to apply early so that you've got the best chance of getting onto the course that you want. So in terms of the costs, um, so here, this is the maximum costs that will be charged. So often courses are a lot, uh, a lot less than this. But you can see here, for undergraduate students, um, you can see the uh, costs for local and European students. For international students, so if, you're, uh, if you've got a South African passport, the cost may be a little bit higher. It really depends. Um, for postgraduate students, the average cost for international students is usually around 11,000 a year for a course. And these, these costs, when they quote tuition costs, they normally um, cover registration, tuition, and exams. So some, you, sometimes you might have to buy your own books and a few other materials, but usually everything, more or less everything is covered in the tuition costs. But when you're doing your research, just double check with the university or college what exactly is covered. Um, and you'll also need to think about living costs, uh, so food, travel, and accommodation, etc. And for that, usually it might cost you around 8,000 to 11,000 pounds a year. Um, some regions of the UK are a lot cheaper than others. Um, and again, you can find information about that on educationuk.org and ucas.com. In fact, UCAS has got some really good regional guides, and they show you the average cost per region of accommodation and transport, etc. So have a look at that. So if you're looking for scholarships, um, there's loads available for international students, because actually UK universities and colleges and the UK government want to encourage um, international students coming to the UK. They want to encourage that dialogue and those connections. So there's loads available. Uh, probably the best place to start is educationuk.org. Um, you can see at the top of the site, there's a scholarship search engine. And you can search by subject, by type of study. Um, you can put in your nationality, because often there's, there's scholarships available to particular countries. So have a good look at that. Um, and also, while you're on the Education UK website, um, there's a page all about scholarships. If, if you type scholarships into the search engine on the site, it will bring up that page. And that lists some other major schemes that aren't covered by the search tool. So for example, there's schemes such as Chevening, Commonwealth Scholarships, Royal Society Grants, there's, it, it lists a, a whole number of them. Apart from Education UK, other places you can find out about scholarships 
Um, there's, there's a website called Postgraduate Studentships, and there's one called Prospects as well. They have good information. And finally, you know, just check university on college websites as well, um, because often they'll have scholarships that maybe aren't listed elsewhere. So if you, if you need a visa to study in the UK, um, you can find information about this on the website gov.uk. So visas are managed by the UK government, Visas and Immigration, UKVI. So that's the web address there, gov.uk. Um, if you're coming for more than six months, um, you'll need a tier four visa. And to get a tier four visa, you, need, you, you already need to have an offer from university or college to go onto a course. And that university or college needs to be one that's been approved by the UK government. Um, you also need to prove that you've got enough money to pay for your course and to cover um, your living costs for the first year. And you might, in some instances, need to have an English language qualification or test if English isn't your first language. You can apply for a visa three months before your course starts, but we recommend strongly that you do a bit of research and preparation before the three months so that when the three months comes around, you're ready to go and put your, put your application in straight away. The cost to apply for, for a visa is around £322. Um, and you also need to pay a health surcharge. Um, so that gives you access to um, emergency health services in the UK for one year. So moving to a new country can be a little bit scary, um, but there's lots of support on offer. Most, well, nearly every university or, or college in the UK has an international office. And they are a dedicated team of people who are there to look after international students. So you can go to them with any problems, you can get advice from them. And they also organize loads of parties and you know, they take you around the city to help you settle in. So, it's, so the uni international office is a really good place to go. Also, apart from the international office, um, there's lots of student welfare officers and most campuses have got a student union which is like a hangout area where you know there's cafes bars and you can get advice from the staff that work there as well and finally these two websites here ukiza.org.uk and nus.org.uk these are organizations run um, for students giving you lots of advice And here's just uh, some pictures of some students having fun. Um, you know, when you're on campus, you'll find loads and loads of sports clubs and social clubs, religious groups, you know, groups associated with different countries. So kind of get stuck in. And if, if you can't find a group that you're interested in, start one yourself. So, so that's the end of this presentation. Um, please feel free to have a look at educationuk.org. Um, and if you've got any questions, please come and see us at the stand uh, in the exhibition here. Or you can join us on Facebook um, and you can ask questions through that. And also there's a number of UK universities at this fair, so um, please feel free to have a chat with them as well. So I hope you find that useful and if you've got any questions then ask away. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.